Can somebody please bring back the good old fashioned classic breakdown with the band playing a sloppy generic chug riff and the singer yelling some sort of cool hardcore line before it? Is that so much to ask of the world? What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. this is the Punk Rock NBA, and today we are going to talk about my personal favorite art form, the breakdown. Some people are into painting or sculpture, maybe interpretive dance, but me, I am into this. So if you are like me and you miss top 10 breakdown videos, poorly executed guitar flips, and the absolutely reckless, irresponsible use of bass drops in every single measure, then stay tuned because this video is for you. But before we get into that, number one, if you have not yet followed me on Instagram, I would appreciate it very much if you would. There's a link to that in the description. Number two, if you want to support the show on Patreon, patrons get access to a bunch of stuff like every podcast a week early. There's an opportunity for me to review your band or any other creative project that you might have. Also link to that in the description. And number three, I did make a Spotify playlist for this video. So if you wanna check that out, that is also in the description. And with all that out of the way, let's get into the video. First, let's get clear on what exactly is a breakdown. When I say that word now, I think most people probably think of a bunch of guys in skinny jeans doing some sort of synchronized dance moves to a syncopated chug riff. But what it actually means is in the context of song arrangement, it refers to a part of the song where you break the song down into its essential elements as a way of creating dynamics in the song. For example, here where they break the song just down to the drums and bass. Get it! Get it! If you've ever heard the term break beats, that's where it comes from. Like when people sampled these breaks, looped them, and then rapped over them, that was the beginning of hip hop. So that's the origin of the term, and to some extent that's just semantics, but it actually is a relevant point, which I'll return to later in the video, so keep that filed away. Which brings us to part one, the early years of the breakdown, basically the 80s. Before there were syncopated chug riffs that were created specifically to make kids spin kick each other in the face, we had the mosh part. Not quite as cool as a breakdown, but we were working with limited resources. I mean, back then our guitars only had six strings. What are you supposed to do with that? You can debate all day long who did it first. I'm not really interested in that, but I would say that as far as who popularized it, Bad Brains were one of the first. And then all the 80s New York hardcore bands that essentially picked up where Bad Brains left off took that to the next level. And in parallel to what hardcore bands were doing, thrash metal bands were doing their own version of that same idea. The first big milestone here is Raining Blood by Slayer in 1986. I remember the first time I heard this and my 14 year old brain just exploded and I immediately went and played a really, really bad version of it on my Fender Squire and Crate combo amp. And the second big milestone here would be Domination by Pantera, which came out in 1990 on Cowboys From Hell. Hell yeah, brother fucking Pantera. You put all of that together, the stuff the hardcore bands are doing, the stuff the thrash metal bands are doing, you have all the raw ingredients and the recipe for the next stage of breakdowns. Which brings us to part two, the 90s. And again, the hardcore and metal scenes are kind of both working on this in parallel, but increasingly overlapping more. First of all, the metallic hardcore bands. And I know you guys make fun of me for how much I talk about Earth Crisis, but I'm telling you, you guys do not understand how important and influential they were. Like they really did change everything overnight with the Firestorm EP. Like they were the Nirvana of hardcore. After everybody heard this riff, it was over. This is the exact moment when hardcore started to sound like metal and when the breakdown started to become like the most important part of the song. Along with Earth Crisis, you had bands like Poison the Well, VOD, and of course, Hatebreed. And an interesting thing to me is how the breakdown kind of turned heavy music into a kind of dance music in a way. Like when Hatebreed played this part. You knew everybody was gonna go the fuck off and kill each other on the dance floor. And on the metal side of things, there was the rising groove metal scene, which I think did a lot for breakdowns by finally combining the groove of hardcore with the tightness of metal. 
first of all, Sepultura. I personally prefer their thrash stuff like Arise, but I remember every fucking hardcore band on the planet was like biting Chaos AD when it came out and then a couple years later, Roots. And Machine Head, who were not really popular in the hardcore scene back then, but made huge waves in metal. I remember right after Burn My Eyes came out, like if you read Metal Maniacs in 1996 or 97, it was like page after page after page of Machine Head clones mixed in with like Cradle of Filth clones. Which brings us to part three, the early to mid 2000s, the beginning of the modern breakdown. The first big thing in this era, I would say is the new wave of American heavy metal bands, Kill Switch, God Forbid, Chimera, Lamb of God. The common thread there being that these were bands that came at least in large part from the hardcore scene, but could play as well as metal bands which was very refreshing because let's be honest, most hardcore bands can barely play their instruments. Couple good examples here from God Forbid. And Chimera. I wouldn't say that they were innovative per se in the sense that they weren't really introducing any new ideas to the breakdown, but I do think that they played an important role of really raising the bar in terms of tightness of playing and production. But here's where things start getting really good, in my opinion, the early MySpace metalcore bands. And by good, I actually mean really bad, but bad in a kind of endearing way that makes it good again. This era is where the idea of core kids really started to become a thing. Kids that didn't come from the metal scene or the hardcore scene, they were just kind of their own little thing that sprouted up out of nowhere in random places like Dayton and Toledo. And this whole scene pretty much revolved all around the breakdown, which they took to some absolutely ridiculous and awesome new places. Actually, you've heard it everywhere on MySpace. Everybody's trying to cash in on this thing called the breakdown. Breakdown, breakdown. If you listen to the early MySpace core breakdowns now, it's pretty interesting because it's so different from modern breakdowns. These are all about like really fast chug riffs. Almost like a thrash metal kind of thing, although I'm pretty sure that very few of these bands were actually influenced by thrash in a meaningful way. Like I can't imagine too many of these kids were listening to Exodus and Creator and Nuclear Assault. And of course, everything was super edited and sample replaced, so there's a 0% chance that they would sound like this live. But who cares? The kids loved it, and it was clear that the breakdown was the cool new thing. And there was this massive surge of breakdown-related innovation, kind of like the metalcore Cambrian explosion. Burn this fucking now let's talk about some of the key developments in the breakdown during this era. In no particular order, number one, the scronky panic chord thing. which I think we can very clearly attribute to Norma Jean. Although as they will tell you, they got that whole thing from hardcore bands like Coalesce and Botch and Dead Guy. And of course the thing where the whole song stops, the drummer hits his zill bell, ding, and then they unleash the breakdown. And also we have to mention guitar flips. I guess these aren't technically strictly related to breakdowns, but they do go hand in hand. Thoughts and prayers to every metalcore kid out there who lost an eye to a poorly flipped Jackson or ESP. And on the real hardcore side of things, all the Orange County Trust Kill core bands were doing big things for the art of breakdowns. I mean, it wouldn't be a punk rock NBA video if I didn't also mention 18 Visions and of course the legendary Tower of Snakes breakdown. <laughs> Along with Throwdown and some more obscure bands like Wrench. This was also the era of all the so bad, they're actually fucking awesome straight edge or straight edge adjacent bands like AFB, Tyrant, Fight Everyone, and of course the legendary Life Ruiner. Fuck you! Fuck this! Fuck your motherfucking life! But my personal very favorite thing about the mid to late 2000s breakdown scene, which I've talked about before, and I will continue to talk about because that's how much I love it, are all the top breakdowns compilations that you'd find on YouTube. Of course, 
all in 240p made in Windows Movie Maker with those like built-in aerial font title cards and some ridiculous name like top 10 insane deathcore breakdowns that will destroy your soul. I discovered so, so many bands from these, a lot of which I actually still listen to. These are truly a forgotten art form that seems so like quaint and charming now. Like when I look back at one of those pictures from the 20s or whatever of kids playing that game with like a stick and a hoop. And it was around the late 2000s, I think, that the art form of breakdown started to get really, really good. The bands were pushing them to new levels, the kids loved it, and of course, the more the kids love it, the more the metal nerds hated it. Breakdowns became public enemy number one for internet metal nerds. If you wanted to show everybody that you were a real metaler in 2008, what better way to do that than with one of those old school demotivator style memes, where the punchline essentially boiled down to, Breakdowns are so gay. Which brings us to part four, the late 2000s into the 2010s. In my personal opinion, this was the pinnacle of breakdowns as an art form. This is where they got very, very advanced, thanks to years of effort on behalf of both the hardcore and metal scenes. Again, it's a little bit hard to nail down the exact timeline of all this stuff, but some of the key developments in the art and science of breakdowns during this period would be, number one, hands down, the biggest thing during this period was the creation of Crabcore which was obviously a joke genre that people came up with based on the Attack Attack Stick Stickly video because they danced like crabs or whatever. But it stuck because it really did describe a whole genre of bands. All those like Rise Records bands that were produced by Joey Sturgis that were all kind of variations on that same sound. The signature things here, I think, were first of all, the choppier rhythm of the breakdowns. As compared to the faster, like thrash metal style ones of the previous generation. And also that super crisp Joey production that made metalcore bands sound way, way better than they ever had before and made the breakdowns hit that much harder. And stay tuned for a whole video about Joey, that is in the works too. Another big thing here was adding synth parts to the breakdowns. You can debate about who did it first, it doesn't really matter, because Attack Attack took that to a whole new level with that bizarre like trance kind of part that comes out of nowhere and sticks stickly. And made everyone go, what the fuck is this? And then of course, tons and tons of other bands did it, like Icy Stars and Abandon All Ships, as well as like 9 million other random generic crabcore bands that nobody's ever heard of, except the weirdos that comment on my videos and know every single one of them. And of course, another one of my very favorite things, all the many, many variations of the pre-breakdown mosh call. You know, the part where the singer says some cool hardcore phrase right before the chugs start. Bonus points if you can also use that line on the back of a shirt in impact font. The most notorious of these, of course, is by a day to remember. Disrespect your but that's not all. They had another legendary mosh call. This is a or more recently, Knocked Loose's Arf Arf. I'm also a big fan of any mosh call about penises. For example, I can go with my dick taste right. Or, Suck my dick. I love it when bands include the year in the mosh call. because it sounds super cool when the song comes out, but then really dated within 12 months at most. And of course, the blah thing as popularized by Architects. Blah. Blah. And run into the ground to the point where poor Sam from Architects seems intensely annoyed by the fans beating this dead horse constantly, which will of course only make their weirdo fans punish him more about it. Sam, if you're watching this, I apologize on their behalf. They're doing the best they can with their clearly very, very limited emotional maturity and life skills. Please forgive them. And another trend that I love, one that very badly needs to come back, is the bass drop breakdown. Especially when it's turned up so loud in the mix that it makes the master bus clip for like two seconds straight. I genuinely love like how little they gave a fuck about like the standards of what good production is supposed to mean. 
according to the textbook. Like, you know, somebody heard this played back in the studio from whoever mixed it. They heard all that clipping, but they were still like, fuck yeah, man, that sounds great. Bounce it, put it on a CDR for me, and I'll upload it to pure volume as soon as I get home to my HP desktop PC. Running Windows Vista. Easy Core was another very interesting trend around this time, which is basically pop punk with metalcore breakdowns. The innovation here being that the breakdowns, instead of being like pissed off, are in a more like upbeat kind of scale, sometimes with Moog synths over them. If you want a deep dive on Easy Core, I actually did a whole video about that that you can check out. There's also the thing where they would play a movie sample before the breakdown. It's coming, dude. It's coming, dude. It's coming, it's coming. <laughs> Which for a while was super popular and everyone was doing it. And then suddenly in 2010, that trend like went extinct and nobody did it anymore. Like, is there some sort of central governing body that issues a decree that movie samples are now banned? And lastly, all the bands that made pretty much like every song into just a collection of super downtune breakdowns. I guess people call that down tempo now. You would have to give the Acacia Strain credit for starting this back in the day. But my personal favorite band in this style was the legendary Demolisher, whose EP is sadly not on Spotify. We are here to fucking stay. And that brings us to the final section. Part five, the late 2010s or so to present day. There's no question that the pace of innovation in the breakdown scene has slowed, but that makes sense because we've been working on them for like 15 years. Moore's Law for Breakdowns is over. But there have been some innovations, the first of which I would say is Core Kids discovering Slam and adding that to Metalcore and Deathcore. I would say No Zodiac were probably the first band to kind of popularize that in the hardcore scene. And I would credit Ingested with doing that on the Deathcore side of things. And if you've watched my slam video, you know that I personally do not like slam core. I would suggest checking out some real slam, my personal favorites being cephalotropy and cerebral incubation. And yes, I know what you're thinking, but if gatekeeping slam was a crime, put the cuffs on me and take me away. Guilty as charged. And the other big development, of course, is the invasion of gent. Meshuggah has been around since like the late 80s, early 90s, but for whatever reason, Core Kids didn't discover them until 2008 when Obzen came out and they heard Bleed. And it took them another couple years to catch up and be able to play that kind of stuff. But these days, I'm sad to say that the classic Crab Core breakdown is pretty much gone and it's been replaced with the generic Gent Core breakdown. For example, Yeah, those sound kind of cool, I guess, but are they really breakdowns anymore in like the original sense of the word? To me, playing a super complicated, like syncopated chug part is kind of the opposite of a breakdown. It's adding complexity. It's almost like the new solo. And I know a lot of people love those parts, so more power to them. But to me, I kind of miss the dynamics that came with the classic breakdowns. And of course, the complexity means that now real metal people like them, because to those people, more notes equals better. So the stigma of breakdowns is gone, but if you ask me, breakdowns also kind of got ruined in the process. But look, if that's what the kids are into these days, then who am I to stand in the way? All I'm asking is, can somebody please bring back the good old fashioned classic breakdown with the band playing a sloppy generic chug riff and the singer yelling some sort of cool hardcore line before it? Is that so much to ask of the world? Destroy. All right, my friends, that does it for this video about the evolution of breakdowns. As always, I would love to hear what you think in the comments. There's a lot of stuff I couldn't include in the video. I might do a part two if you guys are interested. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Also, if you haven't yet, I would really appreciate it if you follow me on Instagram. And don't forget to check out the playlist. Also link to that in the description. And as always, I would like to thank everyone who supports the show on Patreon, especially those who support us at the true cult level or above. It is because of your support that we're able to do a lot of things like the podcast. If you are interested in supporting on Patreon, there's a link to that in the description too. Patrons get every podcast a week early. 
There's a private Discord server. There's also a chance for me to review your band, your YouTube channel, any other kind of creative project that you want to send my way. So if that sounds cool, check out the link in the description. And I will sign off for now, but I will see you next time.